Welcome back. So now that we know how to classify ordinary differential equations, let's jump in and look at our first solution method. Our first solution method will explore how to solve linear first order differential equations. So if you forgot what linear and first order means, I would encourage you to hit pause on this video and go back to the previous one and refresh your memory. <laughs> so here we have a standard form linear first order equation. So it is first order because the highest order derivative is a first order derivative, y prime, and it is linear because we don't have any nonlinear terms such as sine of y or let's say y multiplied by y prime. The first method that we're going to look at is the integrating factor method, which, is, which applies to linear first order differential equations. The motivation for the integrating factor method is that we could easily integrate the left hand side of equation 1 if it were the derivative of a single term. So we can actually transform equation 1 into this suitable form. So that form that we are looking for is that the left hand side is the derivative of a single term. And we can do that by multiplying the equation by a function that we will call mu of x. So let's go ahead and do that right now. So we have mu of x multiplied by y prime plus mu of x p of x multiplied by y is equal to mu of x r of x. And we'll call this equation 2. So again, we haven't really done anything special. We just multiplied the left and the right hand sides by a function that is at most a function of x, which we call mu of x. So again, what we're looking at is that we want to transform the left hand side of equation 1 into the derivative of a single term. So let's suppose that that term looked like this. So let's say that we had a single term, which we will call mu of x multiplied by y. And we're saying that, let's look at its derivative. So applying the product rule, we would have mu of x multiplied by y prime plus mu prime of x multiplied by y. And we'll call this equation 3. Now if we compare the left hand side of equation 3 and equation 2 and equating the two because we're trying to enforce the left hand side to be the derivative of a single term, then let's set that equality here. So we have mu of x y prime plus mu prime of x multiplied by y will be equal to mu x y prime plus mu of x p of x multiplied by y. So we see that this term here and this term here is the same. So for this equality to hold, we need these two terms to be the same. That is, we need mu prime of x to be equal to mu of x p of x. And this here is a simple first order 
ODE. Before we go any further, let's recap what we've done. So we have a linear first order ODE. Now, we can't integrate this directly, but we could theoretically integrate it if we could recast the left-hand side as the derivative of a single product. Because if we have the derivative of a single product, we can integrate that directly. So if the left-hand side over here were the derivative of a single product, then using the product rule, we have these two terms over here. Then we compare equation 3 and equation 2. And to see that for that equality to hold, we need the derivative of this unknown function yet, mu prime, to be equal to the function itself multiplied by p of x, which is the coefficient of the y term in our standard form linear first order equation. Okay, so let's continue. So we see that this is a simple, separable, first order ordinary differential equation. So we can divide both sides by mu of x, which will give us 1 over mu of x d mu is equal to p of x dx. We can directly integrate this, which will give us the natural logarithm of mu of x is equal to the integral of p of x dx, and we'll add an integration constant c from the integration on the left that we already carried out. So again, I want to stress that p of x dx it's arbitrary at this point. We don't know yet what this looks like because it all depends on the ordinary differential equation at hand. So we can isolate mu of x, which is this unknown function that we're trying to find, by taking the exponential of both sides. So if we take the exponential of both sides, we have p of x dx, and then plus c. Now I'm going to leave it for you as an exercise to show that we can actually get rid of this c. It doesn't really matter at this point. So what we have left is mu of x is equal to e to the power of p of x dx. And this is what we call the integrating factor. <clears throat> so what we've done is that we found this unknown function mu of x that will result in the left-hand side of equation 1 to be expressed as just a single term, or rather the derivative of a single term of mu of x multiplied by y. So let's go ahead and just say that mu of x multiplied by y, and rather its derivative, is equal to mu of x r of x, which comes from equation 2. So again, this was the whole motivation behind this method, is that if the left-hand side is the derivative of a single term, then we can directly integrate this. So directly integrating this will give us mu of x multiplied by y is equal to mu of x r of x 
dx plus the constant of integration c. So this allows us to solve for y, which is the solution of our differential equation, by dividing both sides by mu of x. And here we go. This is the solution to our linear first order differential equation. So the solution is one over mu multiplied by the integral of mu multiplied by rx, which is the non-homogeneous term on the right-hand side of the standard form equation, plus an integration constant, which can be found from applying initial conditions. And this mu of x here is our integrating factor, which is e to the power of the integral p of x dx, where p of x is the term multiplying the dependent variable in our standard form linear first order differential equation. So again, this constant c can be determined with the help of the given initial condition. And again, I stress that the ODE must be cast in standard form before you begin the solution procedure. So by standard form, we mean that the y prime term here must be multiplied by 1. There cannot be any other functions or constants multiplying this y prime, prime term. If you have such terms, you need to divide the whole equation by that coefficient multiplying y prime in order to cast it in standard form. This is a very powerful method for solving linear first order differential equations. Of course, this is only applicable to linear first order differential equations. So be sure that you are applying the right solution method for the right class of problems.